Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Well, we got to get that. Uh, we got the background is changed again, but that's okay. We're gonna <laughs> that's all right. This sucker. Do a little refresh. <laughs> hey, look at that. You got three. There's three Scotties. On that camera right now. Oh, that is too much sexy. <laughs> too much Too sexy. much. I'm just checking the volume. Yeah, look at that. You got three. Yeah, we're good. Three That's good. We don't want to do the double over. What am I crazy. tying in the background? Oh, that is too much well, you got, sexy. You're getting the echoes like crazy right now. So shut her down, bud. Shut her down, he says. What were you playing in the back? Was it the chum video again? The chum video, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to change any of it. But hey, it's since we're on good. the chum yeah, salmon yeah, fly yeah, tip I'm right now. You might, might as, as well be playing a chump salmon yeah, video. In play the, the teaser. Play the teaser. And it is Halloween week. <laughs> well, I don't know. Hope you got some good plans. You got to kind of sit up straight or you're right out of the camera there. There you oh, go. There you go. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah. It's closer now. So, hey, adjustments. And stop moving. Stay still. Look at the camera. It's Friday Night Flies. It's game time. It's chump season. I forget what I called this fly. Do you remember? The Jaja. Oh yeah, the Jaja from uh, what was her last name there, Scotty Holmes? Gabor. Jaja Gabor. Yeah. Jaja Jaja Gabor. Quit, quit throwing the damn hands up and you're making it trip out there. Because every time right. you throw that thing up, it's I'm trying to behave myself. The... So it's Jaja Gabor. She used to wear these feather boas. My wife named the fly, not me. Otherwise, it'd be like. Coho Demon Slayer <laughs> Booge Bucket. Booge <laughs> Get him. But it's the Jaja. Because uh, apparently she used to wear these awesome boas. And I looked at, stop touching the fly. And uh, I need to handcuff myself, is what I need to do. Yeah. You Straight know, jacket. You don't, you don't really realize how be, much you're moving could... around until you see it on the. Oh, I know. I went and watched the video. Last week was our first week back, and I hadn't been in front of the camera in a while. And I go back and I'm watching the video. I'm like, God, I'm all over the place again. Yeah. Not looking at the camera when I'm talking, looking over here, <laughs> bouncing around like crazy. So we're going to maybe be the first straight jacket fly tying live stream show. I think that's yeah, going to be our is. next evolution yeah, yeah, exactly. is putting me in a straight jacket. And maybe I'll have Ethan's hands coming around behind me because he's getting pretty good now. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tie and I'll sit in front and narrate. But oh, yeah, uh, so where did you get the idea to tie this fly, Scotty? From Zach. From the Zach. From the Zach, from his uh, dumpster, the his dumpster, coho dumpster. dumpster. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's, that's what's really the chum dumpster, yeah. yeah. That's what's uh, fun about our tying community is we bounce off of each other and, you know, one person does something, you're like, hey, oh, ah, ah, inspires you to do something else. So this is my version. But, uh, that's funny because I did the jig rendition. In a which was really neat. If you go back and you watch that video, right at the end, we in the stills of the video where all the flies we were using, so the jig came up right in behind as we were still on the close-up for your fly that you just did today. And then so did that wicked um, SSG. The SSG. Oh, that one is money. So that's another useful thing with Friday Night Flies. You can go back a couple of seasons. You don't have to just do what we're doing now. Check out everything that we've been doing over the last five years. There's a lot of great patterns in there for all the different types of seasons and fish that we fish for. So let's take us down. We're going down. And uh, we'll show you what we got going on here. Okay, there it is. There it is. Give her a slow roll, bud. Give her a little slow roll. Uh, on this one, I was getting a little rushed. I was trying to fill the box because uh, I've been doing a lot of tours. So um, I did forget to put in the one of the feathers, which really kind of completes this. But this fly, without that feather, still works. And, you know, it's not a cheap, cheap feather, that uh, pheasant. Not cheap. So if you want to eliminate it to simplify things, then uh, just the base that you see right here <coughs> is going to work. But let's get to it. And we'll start off with that uh, fancy hook. And now I am tying this sort of clouser style, I guess. Oh, there goes my material spring. I'll save that for later. I have to see it all the time. So what I mean by clouser style is that I'm going to be putting on some bell dumbbell eyes and I'm going to be attaching them to the top of the shank so that it rides hook point up. 
letting us get closer to the bottom. Less, in those fish's faces. And less foul hooking. Less too. hookup on the floor. And foul hooking too. All right, so we got our little thread wrap on there. You can see I'm about a full eye away from that uh, eye of the hook. You want to leave yourself a little gap to be able to tie off. And there's one of those little nifty tricks that Zach picked up off of somebody. He mentioned it in his dumpster fly video, I believe, about putting a little little dam of thread behind the eye helps to keep that thing from sliding back which then makes it able to lock in really well on the shaft of the hook so I do a bunch of figure eights in here get that on there nice and tight so she doesn't move on us and we'll get our vice back down now, just like a clouser, I am going to be putting on a bottom to this fly in white. We're doing a white and pink fly. But I'm just going to kind of cover that hook shaft with that white really nice and well. There we go. And get my, my uh, thread back to the front of those eyeballs. Now, first step, crafter. You're going through that. This is my second cape of the month. <laughs> Dude, I believe it, man. I'm going through it. You imagine if that was bucktail? I would be divorced. Probably. Because I wouldn't have any money for food. <laughs> and you know, I ain't giving up my fly tying anytime soon. So, happy, wife, let's... happy, wife. <laughs> happy husband. <laughs> Happy wife. <laughs> There's got to be one for guys. Come on. All right. So get all that uh, the shorter fibers out of that craft fur or bucktail, whatever you want to use. Actually, you do not want to use bucktail on this one because what it'll do is it'll invert your, it'll fight the eyes and invert your fly. So you can see we got a nice chunk here. I'm gonna grab it nice and short towards those tag ends. I'm gonna cut it nice and clean. And what I've been doing when I'm holding it is I've been rolling it. So you can see it's a nice round roll. It's going to help it go on properly. And just trap it nice and loose with that thread. Pull back a little bit so that the tips are not going to get... You can see I need to trim it a little square. i got some shorter ones back there. I want to just keep it away from the, the eye. There we go, we got nice flush tips this time. Shorten my thread up a little bit so I can control it. There we go. All right, so it's on. I'm just gonna slide it back a little bit. Lock her down. Good firm wraps, making sure I get right in tight to those eyes. Bring my thread around to the back of the eyes and snug it down with one good one pulling forward towards the eye of the hook. I want that trapped nice and close towards those dumbbell eyes. All right, a couple secure wraps behind those eyes and then some nice open loops towards the back. And I'm taking it back to the, uh, the bend of the hook or around the hook point. A few really nice firm wraps around that tail and then nice open wraps going forward. Now, if you want to get fancy, I guess you could use a different colored thread. I like to match it so that it matches the uh, material that I'm putting on there. And then I'm just going to trim those tail fibers. So I'm looking about the same. I'm doubling the length of my fly with that tail. I'm going to bring her back around. Let's make sure that craft fur is on nice and square on the underside of that fly. Now we're going to get a little fancy. Little flash going in there. You can use whatever you want. This particular one here. I do some, I'm doing some in a dark, in the holographic. I do some with the, I got a nice light pink uh, crinkle flash I like to use. I've done some where I've done a little bit of both. 
So you can you can kind of do whatever you want with the flash there. There's not too many strands going in. I'm taking one big long one, folding in half, cutting it in in two. So then I got two pieces going on each side of this fly. Then I'm going to match it up so that it's about the length of that tail, or in other words, the middle. Just kind of works out perfect. And I want two on one side, a couple of nice locking wraps. I'm going to fold this over, trap it, and work it back a little bit. There we go. Put those flies. And now I'm going to work back a few wraps about, again, the distance of that that eye. You got a little bit of a gap because we've got some materials to wrap in behind those eyes. And first one to go is this nice hot pink rabbit strip. Now I'm going to measure it up. I'm going to do it so you guys can see what I'm looking at here. I want to be tying this in on top of the eyes and I'm going to be pushing it through the hook and bringing it down to where the craft fur is tied off. So I'm just going to eyeball it, mark it with my finger. That's where I want the hook to go in. Get it square right in the middle of the mm -hmm. flesh. I'm going to pop it out of my vise for a second while we push that down and around. Should I check the camera? Yeah, see if we're still in focus. I think I got it right back in the same spot. Yeah, that's good. All right, so then we're going to take this rabbit strip and pull it forward so that, that those two tail pieces all get married together. And grab this tip. I'm just going to make sure these fibers are all on top. I'm going to pull it nice and tight. And then I'm going to tie it off. Good firm wraps. Now this one, I do kind of wrap in quite a bit of it and really tie it down because I have had it pull out and then once it pulls out that fly is kind of toast. Yeah. <laughs> All right so you got that tail in I'm gonna go back with my scissors and I'm gonna cut the uh, the rabbit strip I'm gonna sneak my scissors in underneath the fur but along the top and cut it off right where that white ends so that the tail of the pink goes a little bit longer than the white. Alright, so that's our beautiful tail. Now we're going to build the, the collar up a little bit. So I got two different polymer chenilles here. Zach turned me on to these. Another one that uh, influenced from him. So I'm going to grab both of them together and I'm going to tie them in. You know that Zach doesn't come up with anything on his own. You know that, right? Well, these are his. He sent me these guys from. Uh, I think it's the White River. Yeah, exactly. The, we just we just wanted to clarify that which Zach is the Bass Pro not, brand. Yeah, he does not come up with his. He own didn't stuff. make the chenille. No, never. But he turned me on to the chenille. So I'm gonna grab these two pieces, and um, somebody have a hackle pliers. There should be a yeah, pair up top talk. here. Oh, no, I forgot my. And and most of his no. patterns that Zach comes up with is either a copy of Brad's one of mine back. or yours too. Right? You notice that? I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so take your two pieces. I'm going to show you how to lay them out here in a second. I'm just going to grab them with my hackle plier so that I can lift it up and show you. Come on, get together. Get together. Like a happy family. Bing. So I have one chenille going the one way, one going the other way. And then I'm going to twist these up. So if you just wrap it with just the straight polymer <coughs> chenille, what's going to happen is all this fiber is just going to lay back against the fly. So what I'm doing by twisting the two together, one, I'm de-intensifying the purple a little bit. I'm adding a little sexy white in there. But two, it's making a big, extra large cactus chenille kind of thing which is going to help build up that shoulder of this fly so as I wrap I'm going to pull the material back and this is going to make a really thick shoulder on this thing and these hooks are so sharp so if you're using this particular <coughs> hook what is it? be careful it's a Gamagatsu B 
10 or 10s. Crazy, crazy sharp hook. So I got a couple of really nice big thick wraps in there. I think I did about three or four. I'm stopping just kind of shy of those eyes. Cut off that trim or the tag ends. Pull it all back. A couple of nice wraps back here. So you can see we got a real nice thick collar going on. Now the embellishment that really kind of sets this off over the basic one is this silver pheasant in the hot pink. So I'm going to grab myself a nice plume here. And I'm looking for one that has the longer fibers. So I'm just going to peel it off the stock. Trim off that fuzzy stuff in the back. So that's what we're left with. I'm going to tie it with the good side facing myself. Tie it in nice and secure. Really make sure that tip is in there. Get rid of the, the rest of the stock. Or the vein. I don't even know what it's properly called, but there she goes. Main vein. The main vein. I have to say, Ethan, you make a mean pot of coffee, brother. Sounds good. Oh, is there a freshy? Oh, earthquake. There we go. So, I'm going to take these feathers and just pull them back. You've seen us do this a lot with guinea fowl and wood duck with our modal minnows. We're going to do a couple nice wraps of this around. So once, twice, I don't want it too heavy, but I want to add a little what's up. So I think I got a little what's up in there. Is that malware flying? What is that? Silver pheasant. Hmm. It's got a nice pattern to it, eh? Not... Yeah, it's got a different bar. Just going the other way instead of... All right, so then before we go, I'm just going to... We can check this all out. Yep, she's all looking pretty. It looks expensive. Is it expensive? Yeah. <laughs> It just has that expensive look. To it just it. has that look, eh? So there we go. So we got, so you see how those fibers, I'm choosing one that's coming back a little bit longer than that chenille that's underneath. Now I'm going to make myself a little dubbing loop. Yeah, Rich is in the house. He says, beast tie. A lot of work equals big reward. Sometimes. Also makes you cry when you lose it. Yes, it does. <laughs> Hence why I've gone to 20 pound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I was saying, we start out at 12 and work up to 15, 17, then 20. And anything past 20, you start getting really hard on gear. You yeah, then, then it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, you start getting really hard on gear. Drags, fly lines start cracking. Yeah. Yeah, and the only yeah, reason the, tw the 20s doing it to my fly line too. Yeah, you notice that, right? Like nothing. Oh yeah, I need a new fly line. Yeah, it's not not it's just it. stretching it right out. Like when you get one in the ass accidentally and he takes off down river, and you gotta put the brakes. You on. gotta put full brake. Yeah, and that that line is just humming. <laughs> Cutting the water. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I've gone back to the rabbit here. I cut myself off maybe an inch or a real short inch of, uh, of that rabbit. I'm going to get it into my dumbing loop. You know, uh, Zach's taking a shot at you there. He says that that fly is a beefed up version of the coho slapping, which it does look a lot. It like. is. <laughs> it is. Was that Zach's last year one? No, I did the coho slapping. Oh, come on. All right. So it is, it okay. is tricky to get that rabbit in there. Okay, great minds think alike, man. And that's the truth of it right there. He's like, it's not a shot. Yeah, it was, Scott. Or yeah, Zach. it was. Yeah, it was. He's going to cry later. It's all right. It's all right. All right, so we got that rabbit in there. I think what I need to do is give it a little spin to close my loop a little bit. There we go. Come on, rabbit. So you get it in as close to that skin as you can. Because then you got to do the nice difficult part of trimming it off cutting your without losing all the rabbit out. Oh, yeah. Can you see that on the bottom there, Ethan? Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to try and spread this out. That's expensive dubbing right there. 
You're an animal. A filthy animal. But I've done it with, um, if you have to, you know, marabou works. I've done it with marabou. It's not quite the same as the rabbit. The rabbit is just uber sexy. All right, so we got that in there. You can see those uh, butt ends are pretty close. Oh, and I just opened up my loop. How did you do that? Because I was a pull the rookie. Pull the rookie move. I got some in there. Let's see if I can sneak some in here. Okay. Unwind, unwind. This way. This way, it's going to make you break them. You might just have to redo that loop. We'll find out. See how he recovers here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll break for a brief commercial break. <laughs> I guess that's what CBC would have done. You should have just changed the screen and gone to commercial. Ooh! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This broadcast has yeah. had some errors. All right, so we got that rabbit in there. Spun up. Pull some of that loose stuff. And uh, with Brad's Velcro, there it should be. Oh, nice save. Nice save. Let's pull. Bingo, that's what we're looking for. And then I like to take mine off that big spinner of mine and just use my... I think that's where the rotary issue for, uh, comes in pretty handy. No, and I end up doing it just as fast like this than having to put a half hitch in and set my cradle up. I just got used to doing it. Yours isn't... Is your your cradle's not stationary? It's not on there, is it? I took or mine you, off. You take it off? I take it on and off. It just slides into oh. this thing. So we figured eight around those eyes and behind the eyes and a little bit in front of the eyes. So if you don't drop all your uh, your rabbit off the hop, you usually have a little bit more. But she's still looking good. Hook in my hand. So just pull all your rabbit back. Wrap that right back to the eyes. Look at that thing. Looking good. Finish her off with a little bit of hot pink or orange. Diamond dub. I think this one here is. Rich, uh, <laughs> Rich Woodhouse is like. Laser uh, dub. I'll take this Boulder Special for Xmas or Christmas. <laughs> He's like, seriously. <laughs> well, Rich. You now have the tools to get her done yourself. And that is very true. And you also have the recipe now, too. You'll be surprised at what you can accomplish if you try it a couple of times. It's that couple of times. Hey, even when, I'm, when we're all coming up with them, the first couple don't always it's turn out. <laughs> Speak no. for yourself. Are you kidding me, man? My prototypes are fishing, straight up. Well, fishing, yes, but straight are they up. as good as they end up? No. I, I don't think I'm at the same level as you are for fry time in the first place, <laughs> Scott, but my flies don't have troubles catching fish. No. No. So, I mean, as long as you put that in perspective... It's not always the sexiest fly that catches the fish. No, there's, there are that. flies for fishermen, and there are flies for fish. Oh, 100%. Definitely. So I'm just taking that Velcro and just roughing up that, that silver... <laughs> and uh, roughing up that silver... Hits the door ...pheasant. Off. And if you want, you can, you can rub it all forward. Gets it mixed in and through the rabbit and the chenille. And what you're doing is you're basically kind of breaking the Velcro, the natural Velcro that's on these feathers a little bit so it doesn't clump up as much. I usually use a, a toothbrush. It's a little less aggressive for doing that, but Velcro works really good as well. Bingo. That's your fly. Cool. Give it a slow roll, man. you got to give me a thumbnail, too. Here, you got to go in Dun, 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 dun. This thing wiggles and wobbles and flows and gets chum a biting. We've dead drifted this thing successfully, stripped. Yeah, because I've been dead drifting that thing. It looks like Oh, flesh it just tumbles and fleshy. Yeah. So, yeah, we were having a lot of success with the troll top. 
Clouser from last week in the pink, and that's kind of where this one came from as well. It was a it was a big melding melting pot of flies that went into making this guy. Kapow. Kapow. Okay, thumbnail, right? Yeah, I like I like these ones. <laughs> or should I do that one? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That works. Okay, we're going up. <laughs> Still working. So, you got. <laughs> you're throwing a thumbnail. A thumb up. I'm throwing a yeah, thumbnail behind my thumbnail. Get back in the center. There we go. There we go. Scotty, so, right now we're showing, we're showcasing what's happening in the river behind you. Yes. How do people get a piece of that? Hammerandfishfinder.com. Talk to our lovely booking agent Melissa. I've heard that she's really lovely to deal with and she'll get you squared away with getting on the water with Brad, myself, and some of our other guides. Unless you're, it's your boss, right? She's really nice unless she's your boss. Uh, no, she's nice to me. <laughs> well, she's my boss in more than one way. She's not so nice to Brad all the time, but that's his <laughs> wife. And she keeps him in line. She's it's needed to be done. Right we here. all, we all know we all need to be kept in line. That's why we get married. Um, so, yeah, give us a shout, uh, dot com. Well, that'll get you through to all the avenues. You can read about our guides, get our fishing reports. And if you can't spell permanentfishfinder.com, then just I don't want to take you on tour. Yeah, or go to flyfishing.tours. Oh, oh, yeah. Same that's thing. another It'll take you there. directory. Yep. Another link. Flyfishing.com. No, flyfishing.tours. Fly fishing Fly fishing dot tours. Yeah, fly fishing dot tours. All right. How so fitting. We're going to take you fly fishing. I like it. I like it. That's an easy one to remember. Yeah. So, yeah, check us out. And, um, yeah, join us on the YouTube. Definitely, if you're not a subscriber, or you're new to us this year, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's a lot of good videos on there that don't always make it to the Facebook. Like uh, myself, for instance, have just received a nifty little stone foe travel vice and i'm going to be putting together did you a little, get it already it's i got it it came why didn't today you bring it? why didn't you bring because it because i it just came today oh. and i spent the whole day out on the river and oh, i haven't even i haven't even cracked the seal i just got oh, the package on. yeah yeah so stay tuned there'll be a product reveal of that and uh, zach's always doing a lot of good little reveals uh on the youtube channel as well and scotty holmes is posting fishing once in a while out there with Reese, the up and coming star, she's gonna be our next uh, fly tire. Yeah, and fall tire for sure. I don't know about guide, she's kind of hardcore into that ski racing. But uh, join us again. We're gonna be back with a couple more videos tonight on Friday Night Flies here at Spud Valley. Thanks. Who's up next? One of these boys. Who's taking the reins here? Oh, Ethan. Look at look how chomping. eager they are, yeah. eh? They're they're scrapping back here. Okay. So gonna... we'll be back. Ciao.